this lesson, we're gonna do the sheer batter. Now, this is one recipe that is so rewarding, especially when you're first starting out in bread baking, because it's fairly simple to mold and, uh, and, and that sort of side of things, but there's quite a few stages, so it's great practice to learn the stages, whilst actually it's not being too complicated. There isn't too much natural or trained skill that you need to follow. So if you're doing all right with the recipe so far, this should come fairly easily, let's hope. So, we're gonna make a biga, which is a slow fermenting sponge. So a sponge is another way of, way of calling it. So all we're gonna take is some water, flour, and a little bit of yeast, tiny bit of yeast, and we're gonna then make that into, uh, give it a little turn, and then that will ferment, and that will bring out a lot of the flavor, whilst also making that yeast a little bit more active. So when it goes into the main mix tomorrow, in about 18 hours time, it's gonna add a lot of flavor, it's gonna add structure, but it's and a little bit of aroma. But first of all, we're gonna weigh the water. So like with anything in bread baking, the water temperature controls a lot. Now it's fairly warm, it's about 22 degrees over here at the moment. So that's warm for Britain. If you're American, you're probably, or Australian, you're probably laughing at me, but that's uh, warm for this lot. So we're gonna, what I've done is I'm just using tap water. Now, if I was going to do this for the full 18 hours, then I would probably use cool water um, in the fridge. But I'm gonna shorten this down a little bit because I want it to be ready at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna use water that's about seven, eight degrees, so not quite down to the five. So we're gonna take 232 grams of water, and that goes in first. Now we only want to use 0.49 grams of yeast, which is gonna be very hard to measure even with these scales. But, we're gonna go with 0 0.5, there we go, that much, and just sprinkle that in there. If you sprinkle a little bit in to start with, it'll help. Then, get your whisk, and it's really important that you whisk this up. In there like that. Now, we can take the risk, we can just weigh it in the bowl straight away, or you can weigh it in a separate bowl, whatever you wanna do, really. Um, so in here, we have 340 grams of flour. Now this flour is Italian, zero, zero flour. So it is soft, it crumbles, it doesn't uh, stick together. It is, it's quite weird like that. It, it just goes into finer, finer granules. It never bonds. So we're just gonna give this a mix, a light mix. That is gonna make the bread a sheer batter as opposed to just a straight loaf of bread. It's that important. So, we cover that with a bit of cling film or you could use some food bag or something like that over it um, to cut out any moisture, uh, cut out any airflow from it, um, because that'll dry it up. And yeah, leave it for 16, 18 hours, depending on the temperature of your water, the room. Um, might be a little bit quicker, might be a little bit longer. Okay, so the starter the next day, our Biga, looks like this. It's nicely developed. There's holes all the way through it, air bubbles, and the smell, it's one of the most remarkable things. It just comes up smelling so perfumey, so uh, alcoholic, it's absolutely lovely. So of course, now's the time to start weighing up our ingredients. We're gonna need some flour first of all, which again is the same flour, it's double zero flour. And for this, we're just gonna use 400 grams. So bearing in mind that is, we used 340 yesterday when we were making the bigger, and 400 of the fresh for our main dough. So that's a really strong percentage of bigger to our main flour ratio and the reason for this is we want that perfume flavour, we want those aromas and we want a really strong and thick dough. Okay we're going to add a bit of yeast which is seven grams. It's 
quite hot today, so I'm only going to put in actually, I'm only going to put in six because otherwise this dough is going to explode, I think. So in that goes there, that can go with the flour. Next stop, the salt. Now for this recipe, we're calling on 12.8 grams, which is about 3% to the, to the original flour weight, but when you consider the amount of flour that's in the beaker, it does bring the percentage down to a more, more normal 2% layer. This salt seems to be not dissolving in my flour, so what I'm going to do into the actual dough, so what I'm going to do is put it in the water, give it a mix up with a mixer, and that should then allow the uh, salt to break down properly. So water, we actually add it in two steps, so 256 grams in the first go, and then so we'll add our salt to that. And for this one, it's 104 grams. Now the olive oil adds a little bit of flavour, a little bit of colour, uh, a little bit of uh, aroma, a little bit of smell. So we're going for 7.6 grams here. But you can be a little bit more generous if you want to be. And of course, I've added a little bit extra in, um, just because it will stick in the pot. The only thing remaining to do is just to give the salt a beak. Now, I said I don't normally do this, but I'm trying this uh, posh salt that I got from France. And for some reason, the crystals just don't want to break down. So, in we go with this. And that's it, perfect. Let's put this in the mixer. Add in the water. And hopefully, we get all that salt out. So I'm just going to scrape the bowl, and then in with the flour and yeast that are ready to go in later on. So we're going to crack this up, and we're going to mix slowly. And it's going to be for about eight minutes. We're going to really try and get to the window pane effect with this dough. Okay, that looks really nice. Let's give it a bit of mix around. Okay, so that's eight minutes slow and eight minutes fast. And you can see this dough has got a nice white colour to it. Uh, relatively smooth. We we'll try and stretch it out. Have we got We've got, we're not quite a window pane just yet, but you can see it's really close to being there. What we do now is we're gonna add the second amount of water, and we're gonna do that with the motor running on slow. If you're doing it in uh, by hand, you just put the dough back into the actual bowl, use a larger bowl, and then just mash it up for a little bit. And uh, it takes two minutes or so, but it will eventually incorporate. So we're putting it on slow. You can do it on fast if you want, if you've got a big enough bowl, but I do find that quite often it splashes back out of the bowl, so it's, uh, it's a bit silly. So I'm gonna add this gradually, and what this does by adding it in later is it just creates some more irregular, it confuses the pattern of the dough and uh, gives us that irregular crumb that we crave in sheer batter. So as you can see, it's flying up already. So, leave that in there for a minute or two. Don't be tempted to add flour, it will incorporate. And as soon as we get to this stage, we're gonna crank up to the higher speed and get that really fully incorporated. For the final stage, we just added the oil and frayed the um, camera cut out there. Um, so yeah, all we did was we kept mixing, uh, mixed it on uh, slow then fast after we added the water, and then we just did the same again. So we mixed that for about four or five minutes, 
We had nice long strands of gluten in there. Um, and then we added the oil in on slow. I put my apron on because I, I really don't like the oil going on my clothes. Um, and yeah, that took about 30 seconds a minute to incorporate and then we cranked it on and fast for a moment. Now because this is very wet, this is very high hydration, uh, it didn't go into a ball um, at all. So um, if you're trying this for the first time, you may want to, and I will change the um, recipe so you've got like a new uh, first time one. Uh, with, with less water, so instead of uh, 104 in the second water, maybe something like 50 or 60 um, added then would actually be a little bit easier for you to cope with. So um, to get it out of the bowl, first of all I've oiled this bowl, bowl um, and then I've oiled, of course oiled my hands so they're not sticky now. Um, and then we're just going to tip it out over into this. So yes, now let's have a look at this dough now as we leave it to rest. Now you've got to bear in mind, we're going to now um, leave this to ferment naturally. So if it's completely ready now, then it would be completely ready to start our final proof. So it needs to be a little bit under ready. So if you can see that we have now got some sort of window pane thing going on here. It is still quite irregular, um, but you can see the strength in part of that gluten. Um, yeah. And I think as we leave that to rest, and we're gonna do three folds after 20, after every 20 minutes. So one fold, 20 minutes, one fold, 20 minutes, one fold, um, 20 minutes. And then we're going to divide our shear batter and they'll quickly prove in about an hour and a half um, ready for the oven. So that fermentation time before we divide and do our final proof is going to really allow this dough to force itself together and become absolutely perfect. So I'm excited about these. You may think, oh, that's a little bit stringy, it's a little bit irregular. That's absolutely fine. It would be less so if we had a less second water, um, but this will actually make a really nice, light and long um, aerated dough. Okay, so the next stage is the stretch and fold. So we've allowed it to rest for 20 minutes, and now we're gonna do our stretch and fold. So we, again, we can do it in the bowl. Uh, or you can do it at the table, but I'm going to just do this in the bowl. So nice stretch up and over. Good idea to wet your hands so it doesn't stick. Up and over. Up and over. Up and over. And look, you don't have to be too exact about it. All you're doing is moving the dough around, putting the new bit, uh, the bits that are warm and more um, active. Um, from the outside to the middle, I'm just swapping it around. Uh, and that's it, that's all you gotta do. Um, that's fine, so again, we'll leave this, we'll do it again in 20 minutes, repeat the process, do it again in 20 minutes after that. Okay, so we'll repeat the same process again. Pull up, and over, up, and over, up. Fantastic, another 20 minutes, we do the same thing for the last time. Okay, for the third and final fold, again, you can start, this dough is now starting to take on a bit of charisma of its own, it's got a wobbly, <laughs> but still firm. And yeah, so we give that another 20 minutes, might actually pull that down to 15, this is almost ready. Um, and then we're going to start dividing the sheer batters into pieces. Okay, what I've got over here is a tea towel, which um, is it's a clean one. Um, and then I'm just gonna add some flour and semolina to it. This is just a mix from where I've used flour and semolina before. Then just scraped it off the table, giving it a sift to make sure there's no uh, clumps of uh, dirt, uh, clumps of dough locked in there. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Um, we probably don't need that. So, I'm just going to sprinkle some of this again on the table. Now, what's really careful about this is we don't incorporate any flour inside the dough. We're not going to fold it, we're not going to mould it. We're just going to place the dough on the table. 
or well flowered. Uh, we can put a bit of uh, flour semolina on top, that will just help us cut into it so our blade doesn't get stuck. Um, and then we're just going to weigh our dough pieces. So for these ones, I'm going to look to do some slightly wider ones than I would normally do. So you can do small ones like that, you can, do, you can even do little rolls, um, you can do long ones. We're going to go ours about that big. So first of all, the good, best thing to do is to make sure the dough is relatively that sort of shape. If we need a bit more flour underneath, then we'll put a bit more flour underneath. Okay, as long as we don't get the flour inside it, that's the main thing. So, uh, so our dough piece is now in kind of the shape that we're going to want. Uh, I can just prickle it around with my fingers just to kind of spread out any dense pieces of dough. Um, and yeah, I think we're ready. So we're gonna just cut this one along here. And we can weigh them, but we can opt to not. Now, I'm just gonna lay the first piece on there and then we fold the top piece up, okay? And then the same with the next piece. Now, it's up to you, you can make them a bit tighter and you'll probably have a more uniform shape. Or we can have a little bit loose and allow them to kind of go their own way, as uh, Fleetwood Mac would say. Um, then, interestingly enough, you should rub some on your hands. You can, oh no, go that way, or you can flip them over the other way, it doesn't really matter. Um, so it will add a bit of effect if you do it at the last stage, which will show when they're ready to go in the oven. So, light dusting there. I think this one will just be one, a slightly larger one on there. Okay, so uh, making sure we've got enough flour so it doesn't stick. And these will now be left to rest or to final proof for around an hour to two hours. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half and these guys are looking absolutely beautiful. Now we can sort of do the pinch test now and it does still spring out a little bit, but we do want a bit of oven spring coming from these. And if it was to be overproofed, um, so it had no strength, so if we were to push it in and it was to stay completely down, then um, it would, be, it might actually collapse in the oven and we want it to puff up, we want it to get nice and big. So a little bit under is definitely recommended. Um, an hour and a half, look, they've pretty much, I would say almost doubled in size, they're a lot bigger than they were. Um, just a reference, I put this uh, scale, I mean it has to be a scale, be whatever you want, uh, on the side to keep this edge flat and stop that side, give this uh, bread support. Without it, it would have gone a little bit widthways, which would have been a disaster, but that, that's you know fair enough. I'm going to use um, my baguette peel and just put them in one by one. So there's two ways to do it. You can either put it in this way, okay, and this way you're going to get the lines on the top from the surface, from the mat, um, and it's going to be kind of a, but then again it's also going to be a sort of a more uh, smooth top, a less irregular. And we'll put this one in like this, and then the other way we'll show you gives you the other side on top, which gives a more rough um, um, exterior. worried about it sticking, um, you can, I did flour the peel this time to make it a little bit easier. So this way, we're going to, we picked up exactly the same way, but we're just going to tip it over that way. <laughs> Give it a poke so it stays on there. Uh, we're going to try and keep these separate because they will batch. We don't want that. We're going to do two in one, one in the other. That's not perfect, but hey, that they'll be very nice, I am sure. So there you go. So in they go like that. We're gonna add a little bit of water. The other one will get done afterwards. Not loads, we don't need to put any extra steaming. Just this initial hit. Get that door shut. Drop that down to 220. 
Uh, just going to put the top heat on just so it gets up to that 220 temperature as soon as possible. The stone is nice and heavy. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're just going to bake these off now and should take about 220. After about 20 minutes, we'll come and have a look at them. And what we'll probably do then is open the door and just try and aerate the, uh, the, it, the crumb inside. Let's the steam out. It's a bit of a wear off. Keep the door closed. Actually, I'm going to change that to 10 minutes. So it's had its extra 10 minutes. We've given it, I've turned around. Open the door, that is going to be absolutely lovely. It's going to have a nice little crust on it. So, you can go out to cool, and the other one can go back in. Ooh. And here we have our beautiful shear batters. So this was the last one that came out on his own, um, which was, remember this one was slightly bigger than that one anyway, that's why it's bigger, it's not be that one's not better, um, it's just bigger. This one here is this one that was uh, done the other way around, so you get the lines on top, which some people like, um, but it hasn't quite got as much uh, growth onto it, as much oven spring um, as perhaps the other two, but they're still gonna be absolutely delicious inside, so let's just cut one up. Uh, Let's just do that one, shall we? Yeah, there you go. So, nice and open, soft, springy. Absolutely delicious. Um, yeah, I really love making sheer batter. Everybody loves eating when kids especially love eating these shear batters. So give it a go, you can make your own little variations, you can um, bake them for longer, dry them out a little bit more, so a little bit less. I uh, hope you really enjoyed this recipe, give it a go, let me know how you get on in the comments below.